Hey friends, it's Nate with Exley Apiary. It's been a while since we had another update. I, uh, I filmed an update last week and uh, did an open apiary and my son came and, and joined me. And what I didn't notice is that about five minutes into it, and he's learning to potty train, he doesn't know any better, but he walked back off into the, uh, the back side of the frame and uh, just goes to the bathroom in the middle of the video. So I couldn't figure out what to do. I didn't want to post it. So that's why there's not been an update. My son went and used the restroom in the middle of one of my videos. So just one of the joys of having toddlers and uh, being a dad. But I'm with you today back in the apiary. I'm going to show y'all how these styrofoam hives are holding up. There was a lot of interest when I did the tutorial on how to build a styrofoam hive out of uh, recycled styrofoam coolers. And for those of you who didn't watch it, just a short synopsis, I upcycle styrofoam coolers that are used for shipping animal vaccine. Uh, these coolers are one-use cooler and they would be thrown in the dumpster if my company didn't graciously allow me to recycle them. And here they are now. So you can see that the bees, they'll chew out a little bit and it really depends on the temperament of your bees, whether they chew it a lot or the little. I have a normal Langstroth hive over here. And this is my lovely Italian Carnolian hive. You can see they've chewed it out a lot. They'll make themselves some entrances here and there underneath the edges. But overall, the styrofoam holds up very well. It's about two inches thick, the walls are. And structurally, it's been pretty sound, and I love how versatile it is. Like, I can cut it into whatever shape I need to, and I've actually used it for lids and bottom boards in a pinch, and it works well. Some animal was trying to get into that hive last night. That's why it's all chewed up. So it is, it is still, it can still be messy. I need to come through and clean up the apiary now because that animal got a hold of it. So I've got a mix of both styrofoam and normal wooden hives. And you can see that they are chewed at varying degrees. Some hives will chew them more than others. This one even put a hole down here in the bottom. That's pretty neat. I do have two sizes here. There's deeps and then there's supers. I'm moving to only doing the super sizes because it's difficult if I want to take a frame of brood from a box this size and move it to a weaker hive, I'm restricted to only moving it to the other weaker hives that are the same size, using the same size frame. So I can't take a brood frame from a deep box and put it into a super a frame, excuse me, I can't put it into a beehive that's only using supers like that one. So that's restrictive. Um, I want to move to all one size of equipment. And there's varying opinions on what size to use. I'm reading Langstroth's book right now on beekeeping and he recommends using larger larger hive body sizes because if you use a bunch of small ones he says it breaks up the brood nest and uh, a few other apiarists who I respect say the same thing um, but just at this point where my apiary is I don't quite have the resources to uh, do a dual deep and super box because most apiaries will have two deeps and then supers built up on top of that to make a complete hive unit. I'm strictly using supers because that's just what I have. Um, that's the most of what I have. So anyways, that's my apiary right now. That's an update on the styrofoam hives and how they handle. Um, a few of you wanted to know if they hold up well and they do. The Texas sun beats down on these really hard. We've had 103, 105 degree days, and that's not even the index. The index was like 110. And these hives haven't yellowed very badly yet. Um, I've had them installed since January of this year. And they're just a mild, the worst ones are a mild cream, but most of them are still white. So it looks very neat and tidy. Um, they don't mildew like the wood hives do, I found. And you also don't need to paint them, so that's a big plus. I don't like to have to spend a lot of time painting my hives. The only thing is that they do tear up easy. If an animal decides they want to get in there, if you're in bear country, the bears will just take that styrofoam cooler apart. I wouldn't recommend this for bear country unless you've got a, 
electric fence. These will will probably work better in the winter than your standard Langstroth hive because they are styrofoam. They're better insulated. I am uh, I'm kind of hard pressed to see any difference between the styrofoam hive and then a hive with a screen bottom board. So as far as ventilation goes, these bees that are on a uh, these bees that are on a screen bottom board are really doing just about as well as the hives that are in the styrofoam boxes that only have the ventilation that they're making. This is another hive. This is the bush swarm. If you watched our Steve Irwin impression video, this is the bush swarm. They're doing great. They're also on a screen bottom board and they're doing just about as well as uh, some of my other hives that are in just the completely styrofoam boxes. So ventilation, comparable between wood and styrofoam. Insulation, I think the styrofoam definitely comes out on top. Like I said, we have some tremendously hot days here and they seem to be doing really well. They don't seem to be overheating. Um, and I'm actually, I feel safer having my bees in these styrofoam coolers than I do in the wooden boxes because this sun just radiates down through the roof and I, I worry about them baking. So overall, very good experiences with the styrofoam. Um, it's just the obvious environmental impact of throwing them away after one use or moving them out there to your apiary where they could potentially get torn up by wild animals. So just keep it clean if you're gonna use them, be responsible. Uh, and when you throw them in the trash, just try to get them as much, get as much use out of them as we can. We don't wanna unnecessarily fill up the landfills. I think that's it. Ah, one other thing I'll point out, feeding. I feed through the top. You can see that I just drilled a hole in the lid through the styrofoam. Like I said, the stuff's super versatile and easy to work, so I don't need a bunch of fancy equipment to work it. I do use an oscillating multi-tool to cut it. But other than that, I can literally take the blade of a sawzall and use my hand to cut whatever holes or anything else that I need. So, very, very happy with how these have turned out, and I thought I would give you all an in-depth tour of how they're working for me. Anyways, if you enjoyed it, check out our original tutorial video on how to build these styrofoam hives. You can find that in the description below. Make sure to like, subscribe, share with your friends, and drop me a comment if you have questions. I'm happy to make tutorials on any questions uh, that you may have. And uh, we'll see you next time.